Right guys, second day here at the Destiny, like the church here, says Sandy. We're gonna enjoy the day. Um, that's a super super glass there. So yeah. Second day with this guy's here. During the first session, we'll be from the yellows, the clear. That's about SLS. And of course, the second session, the orange one, green glory, it doesn't matter if it doesn't use the blue And uh, um, first session in the afternoon, we are referring to the pastor race. Green booklet on the course on church camping, and of course, the last session is uh, the pink booklet. This is about camping for the new church plant, right? So, so, I was looking around yesterday, not feeling in a book, but say, you know, book that's what I'm asking. Okay, but I'm not going to Um, so, uh a lot of the things that we are seeing is here, and you know, we have so much material to cover, but we are picking out from these booklets things that we really want you to remember. And some of these actually will be touched during the SOS volunteer training. So, but because you are pioneer pastors, we are highlighting portions that are most relevant to you because we really want to equip you to be more effective, to maximize your effectivity during SOS and also to give you as much. Uh, ideas and steer you up into what you should really be doing uh, after SOS. But also in the war, it is a, a, a bad news that they were defeated, their forces were defeated, and their men are dead. Or is it good news saying that they have conquered the enemy and and so their their men is able to go home alive? All right. So <clears throat> this verse is on that context. There was war and they won. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the enemy kings told them to do something there, OGT. This is your sparring, church. Amen. You Amen. spar. You, you know the effect of SOS in congregations where their members are going out? Nakita ko sa mga members na sumasama sa SOS. Kahit wala sila dito sa church namin, doon sila sa ibang mga lugar. Ang pag-treat pag sa kanila, parang mga pastor sila. May, may nurse nga kami pumunta sa Saudi. Naganap siya ng church. May testimony siya doon sa church na yun. Eh, yung church na yun sa Saudi, underground, they have no pastor. And so they said, we, we, are, we lost our pastor. Can, can, you, can you preach for the following Sundays? See, he preached. He became the preacher. Alam niyo kung bakit? They were trained in SOS. And then they have sermon, built-in sermons. And then they have several booklets of sermons when he, she went to, uh, no, to Saudi. She became the pastor there for, I think, about two years. And just the young. Kaya mga BDS, kaya nga nang membro ito? No. 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 Into this concept to get their people trained first. Because we understand we are a missionary movement and our goal, as Jesus said, is the world. But you know, we cannot reach the world up there. You know, we are, we are happy now that our uh, movement, uh, the Assemblies of God, has the world missions and we are very happy that we have reached that point. But, but then, as Pastor Ray said, you know, there is no shortcut to that. And the training that our missionaries and would-be missionaries should be, you know, on-the-job training. And actually, Pastor Ray in the whole missions department has provided SOS as the laboratory where people can first learn how to do the work. And then we will have able missionaries. I'm not saying that the missionaries are there. We just have a few missionaries. Now, I'm looking at the people at the back there. These are not just people who are now in Mindanao because just so happened they have the Mindanao Initiative campaign and they are available. These are actually SOS, SOS experienced people. These are our field directors. And Pastor Ray was, was sharing, I, I uh, 
make some notes here. Uh, Babur, is, a, is there an example to this? Now, you know Warren, I, I wish Warren is here. What, what, what made Warren ready to do the work in Cambodia? It's actually because they were our pioneer field directors. Even during that time, we didn't have any manual before. We would have the training, and then bangkok sila alis, they will take the pump boat, cross the open sea, and go to our blood, Masbate. We have this, what we call, FD directives night. We would remember that, Ryan. We would gather all our field directors who were supposed to lead teams of 50 people, all right? Passway would sit down, and we would sit down with them, and we would give them all the kind of instructions. And then they go. And during that time, we have cell phones. Once they are off to the open sea, we would just pray that in Islamaka. <laughs> Now we, we learned, we had some mistakes, and so every year we, we evaluate all this is what should be done. It's only later actually that we developed the manual because uh, there was a time when SOS was being uh, used by World Mission, Mission, whatever. What is that? Uh, there is a group that they say, Every church planted by SOS will be supported. And during that was the time when we would have, during summer we would have as many as 40 church planting all together every summer. And Christian that's the mission. Christian vision. And so they said, do you have a manual? Because then we're gonna make it nationwide. I said, do you have a manual? And then we realized, okay. So I mean, we don't have any manual. We only had loose leaves. <coughs> I mean, you grab back, and we finally sat down, okay, we will put everything in writing. And I remember there was a time we were all together in the office. I sat, mindy, and the rest in a row stone. And then we, and we didn't know what happened. And then we would write down what we were doing. That's how the manual actually started, you know. I, I remember the one after we were all engrossed in writing our respective portions of the manual because he made that line to me. At the beginning of the brown out, so by the way, they'll be like, because you didn't type them in and the moral hat. So it, it was really fun, no? but uh, uh, unless it, and we have been doing this, and this is our outcry. Stay to today, she's out already, look at her. Yeah, we've we'll been together. Doing great, maybe we're gonna have our prenatal later, so awesome, awesome. push ahead. But we need one another, we need each other, and we're all totally gifted differently, as we're gonna see in a moment. So, what I want to discuss this morning is this first session quickly <coughs> is on prophecy and what prophecy is today. And so we find that prophecy in the in the in the New Testament is something really uh, deliberate. And I just wanted to break it all down so that we understand what each of these different prophecies are because I find about prophecy, but each one of them has a different channel. And the different channel is for the effects that it would have at the end. And uh, so I, I, I also sense this morning that, that uh, you know, we just don't want to do uh, stuff that's novice. Um, and, and I sense that you are a group that is, is up there looking for stuff beyond the novice area okay so that's why i dismissed the notes because i sense that you, you're looking for something better you're looking for something more you want to discover something fresh and new and what i learned as a young man in, in pentecost which the gifts the only ones that were ever used were the gifts of tongues interpretation and prophecy that's all we ever saw in the church we never saw anything else of the other gifts, really. We, that's all we ever saw. And it was just every Sunday, someone spoke in tongues, someone interpreted, someone prophesied it. And that's all it was. Until the instinct started to rise within me that there is more. So I began to look at practitioners and saw how they would operate, and especially those that were now beginning to operate for the first time in the word of knowledge and um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the gift of healing. And as I began to watch them, the instinct inside of me was, how can it be done better? How can it be done better? And so, with the prophecy we have today, not relying on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine of them, but relying on a new recalibration 
of what the Holy Spirit is doing today. So what I saw 30, 40 years ago, I see a, a different recalibration of the Holy Spirit today because the Lord wants to do things faster. He's speeding things up. He's giving us an ability to receive more than we've ever received before yeah. so we can give that more out. Amen. Amen. And so that we cannot just see ones and twos in our youth group, but we can see hundreds and thousands in our youth group, hallelujah, that are searching for the things of God because we press the right button at the right time. Amen.